In the late 90s, I used to be a preacher of what they call the Christocentric movement. Those who say they are preaching grace. I used to be a preacher of that. We, we rubbish fasting, we rubbish baptism, we rubbish a lot of things based on our understanding of the Pauline Gospels. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man is in Christ, it's a new creature. And I went to the Lord and the Lord said to me that you've been preaching the testaments and testimonies of Paul. And for those of you that say um, Paul, everything Paul said, came from the lips of Christ. You are wrong. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 12, when Paul was advising and saying that, please, talking about the unbelieving wife, staying with the believing husband. Paul said, this thing I say, I speak not the Lord. I am the one speaking. I'm not commanded by God to say this. It's my opinion. He said, this I speak not the Lord. This is not from the lips of Christ, my opinion. I'm going to explain some things to you because somebody standing under all scriptures are inspired of the Lord. All scripture are God dictated, God breathed, God permitted. Even the negative stories are God permitted. It didn't mean that all scriptures have to be applied in the context of how they were written. Job chapter 3 verse 1 and 2, Job cursed the day of his birth. Did God tell you to do that? Judas hung himself. It's in the scripture. Did God tell you to do that? Abraham lied that Sarah was his sister. Did God tell you to do that? Okay, now, now let's go back to the, the story of Paul. In Ephesians 1, verse 20 to 21, Paul said, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in heavenly places. Verse 21, above principalities and powers, might and dominion, every name that is named, both in this world and in the world to come. So Paul was saying, in Christ, we are above principalities, above powers. But Paul said in Ephesians 6 verse 12, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now the layman is confused and says it's a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. I will tell you why. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 11, Paul withstood Peter and contended Peter because he felt that Peter compromised. That Peter will eat with the Gentiles. When he comes before the Jews, he will do the same thing. So Paul was saying, if you want to be a Jew, be a Jew. If you want to be a Gentile, be a Gentile. Don't stand in between. He told Peter that. But in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 20 and 22, Paul said, to the Jew, I became a Jew. To the Gentile, I became a Gentile. I became all things to all men that they may be saved. So was Paul contradicting himself? No. I will tell you why. Ephesians chapter 2. You read verse 8 and verse 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, not by yourselves. For it's the gift of God. Verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So Paul was saying, your work with God your work in salvation and after salvation is not a function of anything you have done. And that's where the concept of once saved, forever saved, which is an heresy, is heretical. That's where it comes from. So Paul was saying, don't do anything. You have been saved. No matter what you do, Christ has paid for it. But Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone must receive what was done in his body. Whether it is good or bad. So God will judge you based on what you did. But you said, for by grace are we saved. So what was happening? Let me tell you what happened. Paul progressed in revelation. Paul grew in revelation. We know in part. We profess in part. When that which is perfect is revealed, that which is part will be done away with. For when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I reason like a child. So Paul, when Paul just got saved, his first major assignment was to dispute and confound the Jews. To prove to them that Jesus was Lord. So all the revelations Paul had was to dispute. So God gave him grace to grow. Acts chapter 9 verse 22. He grew more and more and confounded the Jews and had disputes and resolved it and proved to them that Jesus was Lord. So what is the problem now? I will tell you. I am actually standing to defend the sanctity of what we stand for. Baptism by water is real. Fasting is commanded. Speaking in tongues is commanded. Oh, we are they standing on? Those who said that Paul did not contradict the teaching of Christ. Okay, let me show them one. We are for Paul, tongues are for a sign to them that do not Huh? Eh? Is it your Bible like that? Verse 39. We are for brethren, convert to prophesy and forbid not. Okay, go to verse 18. I thank God I speak with tongues. So now, hold on. Now you are saying, should I speak in tongues? Should I not speak in tongues? You go to what Jesus said. Mark 16, 17. This sign shall follow them that believe. They shall cast that devil in my name and they shall. So there's no contradiction to the word of God. 
But a scripture does not stand alone. All scripture are written by the inspiration of God. No. Let me tell you what that means. In Romans 15 verse 4. The things that we are written at four times, we are written for our learning. That we through the comfort and patience of the scripture might have hope. Jesus is the scripture. Jesus is the scripture. All scripture means all written about Jesus is inspired of God. All written about Jesus. Jesus is the scripture. John chapter 5 verse 39. Search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life for they are they which testify of me. Jesus is the scripture. Anyone that is contending the lordship of Christ is one we can have a debate with. Not somebody stand up on the altar and come out and say some man of God said God told him. That is arrogance. And we, we can get personal. You don't correct people when you know that you are consistently heretic. For somebody to stand on the altar and say what Abraham did on Mount Moriah was drama. That Abraham knew that God won't take Isaac. That's not true. Abraham knew that even if Isaac was killed, God can bring him back. Hebrews 11, 19. It's with that understanding Abraham went to Mount Moriah. That God was able to raise him up even if he were dead. Not that the almighty God was involved in drama. That is an abuse to the integrity of God. And we all are quiet at that heresy. And you are talking. We are quiet because any debate that does not save soul, ignore it. A man stands and says the fire that came down on Mount Kame did not come from God. It came from Satan. So Elijah prayed to God and Satan answered. And yet you are quiet because you are trying to push a narrative that God does not kill. Sir. God can kill. Luke chapter 12 from verse 4 to 7. Fear not them that can kill your body. After that, they have nothing more they can do to you. But let me forewarn you, you shall fear. Fear him that after he has killed your body, after he has killed your body, after he has killed your body, will cast your soul to hell. And not five sparrows sold for two fattings, yet not one of them is forgotten before your father. For the very hair of your hair are numbered. And you have more value than many sparrows. I am standing to say, this is why I said what I said. Altars are real. Patterns are real. If you don't stop, what stop, stop your father, he can stop you. Altars and patterns are real. Altars and patterns are real. But our relationship with God is what gives us an advantage. Our new creation status gives us an advantage to put the devil where he belongs. Don't believe that lie, that heretical lie, that what stop this can't stop you. It is a lie from the pit of hell. They, they are talking about what they read. I didn't just read it. I went to Cyprus. I went to Turkey. I stood where Paul stood to preach. I sat down with rabbis. So I have been there. I am not saying what I read. I have sat down with rabbis. Paul progressed in revelation. As Paul grew, the revelations grew. I am trying to correct that. I am not against the messages of Paul. But the words from the lips of Christ is paramount to anything anybody says. There is mental knowledge of God. And there is revelational knowledge of God. And there is experiential knowledge of God. The Bible is not a textbook. Stop explaining it with logic. It's a spiritual book. You see this teaching, those that teach these heresies, when they, when they get stuck, they say the context of that scripture, the original trans, I was preaching that thing before. And I can tell you it's heretical. 